throughout most of the digital paradigm, we have not been focusing on the downsides. We have actually been focusing on the upsides. And if we have been focusing on, on the downsides, we have been focusing on when the technologies would overcome the best of us, right? So there was the machine intelligence, and then this moment has a technical term, it's called the technological singularity, when general artificial intelligence would would be best th than the best of us. And we've been playing this game for a long time, focusing on like, what is the human strength? A game you can call only a human can. And we had a lot of these only a human can and we tucked them against the wall and then they were dragged down. Only a human supposedly can play chess. Well, that was several decades ago that, well, Kasparov, the best of us at the time, lost against the machine in the late 90s. And then we said, well, okay, but only a human can play Go, which is much more complex than chess. You cannot solve it with brute force. You need intuition, creativity. There's like this human gut feeling. And we talked about it in a previous lecture as well. Well, in 2016, that fell down too. Uh, and then we said, okay, so, but what about this? So, so chess and Go, these are like quantitative games. What about this qualitative thing? Like a, a, a machine could never like recognize and or interpret an, an image that's very qualitative. Well, that also fell down. And then we said, okay, so, but what, okay, what is about the human speech? Uh, the voice of a mother. That is like a machine cannot be better than a human to recognize the voice. Okay, so that also, and there's, okay, so what about faces? You know, the face of the grandmother, the, the face of like from your, like you can, well, in two thousand that also fell down. And so we've been playing that game and then, you know, generative AI came along and then they surpassed us in AP English essays, that was 2022. And uh, then we was like, okay, maybe we should stop that game with the, only the human can. And now we are focusing on that the, newest AI is better than the previous AI. And now we play this game of AI against, I mean, all right. So, so we love playing this game of when things become, become better than us and, and better than the best of us. And while we've been playing this game, we completely ignored that in order to dominate us, the machines don't have to be better than the best of us. They just have to be better than the worst of us. And while we didn't pay attention, that seems to have happened. They have been starting to dominate us, not in our strength, but in our weaknesses, in our well, negative emotions, in the downsides that we have, in our anxiety, in our anger, in our outrage, in our addictive behavior for trying to get, whatever, we'll talk a lot about these. And you know, just to give you one example, we don't have to now be very academic about it, just think about yourself recently. You know, like recently when you wanted to go to bed early because you really had this very important day the next day and you really needed a good night of sleep that was very important. But just before you went to bed, you just wanted to check this this one social media post or this one video, you just wanted to watch like, but only one, this time only one. And then two hours later, you emerged from this digital black hole and you thought about like, what, what, what happened right now? You know what happened right now? A supercomputer was pointed at your brain. A supercomputer that knows you better than you know yourself. And we will talk about uh, that today. Your little brain, your little brain, basically didn't didn't have a chance. It knew exactly where to take you to make you act against your will. You wanted to sleep, right? And actually there is a judicial term for that that always comes to my mind when I think about that. It's called volitional impairment. That is used legal lingo that kind of like excuses, but there are some people we classify that they have volitional impairment. That's defined as the impulsive behavior resulting from impairment affecting the ability to choose to engage in behavior or inhibit such behavior that is not consistent with the self-interest of the individual. Now, that is a severe condition. We say like, oh, people who have volitional impairment, like don't, like we have to really either protect them or they're not responsible for it. And what happened to our volition, to our will, if the machine can make us do things against our will? You know, I was recently working for the United Nations Development Report and we wrote this report on the Anthropocene, the, the, the Anthropocene where, where the human is in the center of development is defined as an age of human choice. Well, do we still live in the Anthropocene? Do we still live in an age defined by human choice? 